Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Oklahoma Venture Forum podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Golding. Today, I'm joined by Chris Foster from Blue Jay Partners, LLC. They have a very important phone app. Chris is going to explain it. It's one of those one of those products that we wish we didn't need, but we do, and has a potential to save lives. It has potential to save lives for civilians and for police and to really help with something that's a problem right now. So Chris, introduce yourself, explain the app and let people know what it is, what it's all about. Great. Thanks for that introduction. Yes, my name is Chris Foster. I'm 26 years old, born and raised in Oklahoma City, went to Cassidy School for high school and then went to OU studying advertising, where I graduated and became a manager at Lululemon, which is where I currently work now. Supplemented with that is the creation of Blue Jay Partners LLC, which is been like a side hustle kind of but now it's you know manifesting more into my full-time gig hey, so hey, that's how that's a good way to start side hustle sure. yes yep so um i'm really excited to get started um we're very close to the end so um looking forward to getting that launched and making that my everyday thing so explain exactly the, the tell everyone the name of the app and what okay. it, the function that it, that it provides gotcha so the app is called blue jay which some background behind the name of blue jay is when we were starting this program or app, I should say, we were wanting to have something that was, and what I'm most proud of actually would be how we've able to form this app to be what I call like the Switzerland of apps because it's a perfectly neutral app. Okay. Cause that was one of the things that we had to address when creating Blue Jay was, you know, most things that are associated with police, you're either on the police side or you're on the opposite side of the police. Sure. So, we wanted to not come across as an app that's made to, you know, incriminate police. And we didn't want to give a platform for people to just, you know, bash on the police. So a lot of the history and, you know, start of Blue Jay was just figuring out how to come in on a neutral ground. And that's where the name Blue Jay comes in because of all things, the Blue Jay bird perfectly represented exactly what we're trying to do. And the Blue Jay bird is not seen as a bird of malice. It's just, it's a pretty bird. But blue jays, the bird, they have a tendency when they feel, you know, under pressure or attacked, they come together to, you know, address what's happening. So like whether it be, you know, just natural selection or something like that, the blue jays come together and they like become one voice essentially. So you have that being kind of like the the background of the project and then you also have the blue tide of police. So sure, right, you kinda right. have they came together and it was perfect that and it sense. just sounds really good too. So what exactly it is that Blue Jay does is it's the first preventative measure in policing. So currently we have body worn cameras, which were supposed to, you know, solve the problem. But, you know, lots of different city officials here in Oklahoma, like Craig Freeman, he said that body cams didn't necessarily fix the problem. And then you just hear that, you know, countrywide, just people saying, like, we thought body cams were the answer, but really, they're great for after the fact and they're great for like accountability purposes. But what's continuing to happen is the incident is still happening to where the body cam footage needs to be, you know, access. So and the civilians have no no benefit from the body cam. Like you said, they, right. they, they probably don't even know officers have it on most of the time. Right. So exactly. they, have, they have no play in the body in, in having the body cam on yep. on the officer, which it is a citizen's right to ask the officer if their body cam is on, too. So just a little fun fact. So Blue Jay is, you know, trailblazing the space of preventative police measures because, you know, that's exactly what Blue Jay is intended to do is to prevent all of that, all the stuff happening afterwards from even needing to happen. So what it is exactly that Blue Jay does is it allows the driver and the police officer to communicate with each other before the interaction. So both parties have a chance to humanize themselves because through our research, the one thing that we learned from both parties is they just don't have enough information on each other sure. because the police officer doesn't know who's in the vehicle and the person in the vehicle doesn't know the police officer that's pulling them over. So immediately there's just this heightened amount of tension between the two because they're when like... When the red and blues go on, right? Everyone exactly. gets really tense. And then unfortunately, when those red and blues go on, rather than just being like, oh, I was speeding, most people you know, refer to what's being portrayed on TV and it's just like you see shooting after shooting or body cam video after body cam video of someone being forcefully taken out of their car when in reality that could just be you know a one percent or two percent of police where that's happening and that's speaking for the entire department so blue jay that's actually also what we're trying to you know bring to light and change the narrative 
in the sense that that doesn't always happen. That's just what grabs views on the major news broadcasting stations. So you get pulled over. I'm going to try to run you through what it would be like. So you get pulled over on your phone. You have already downloaded the Blue Jay app and you're, you get pulled over on your phone. You receive a notification that says you're being pulled over by a police officer. Um, please tap to see more on your officer. So you click the, the notification and then it'll pull up. You're being pulled over by Officer Johnny Appleseed. And overall, Johnny Appleseed has a four star rating based on other Blue Jay users. And from that point, you'll be able to know who's pulling you over. There's also a reason why you're being pulled over. And so you sit there in the car and you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I was speeding. And just having that information on the officer, we found that people, you know, that's all it takes to de escalate the situation, just knowing why I've been pulled over and maybe who's pulling me over. On the other side of it, the officer receives your Blue Jay profile. And the Blue Jay driver profile is what the app does. It creates your profile. And that's probably the most paramount feature of the app is your profile. So in your profile, um, you will volunteer, you know, humanizing information about yourself. So your name, um, how you identify, occupation, your first language, any disabilities or things that the officer may need to take into consideration if you're behaving a certain way when you're being pulled over. So the profile just allows the officer to make a more tailored approach to who they're pulling up, being pulled over. Because we could go through story after story about an officer pulling over and misdiagnosing someone having a diabetic episode because they very much resemble an intoxicated driver. Right. So if the officer were to know that this person is diabetic, they could potentially not have this situation become escalated. And at that moment, the police officer can also, you know, drop their attention because they're like, okay, this person may not be intoxicated. It says on their profile, they're diabetic. So let me see if I can assist them with their diabetes before, you know, approaching the situation as if it were a drunk driver. This is the, the power of information and communication. Exactly. That's all it takes. At, at, the, at the speed of technology, at right? At the speed of technology. Yeah, for sure. And you know, alongside newly adopted services with the poli the Oklahoma City Police Department, all these features kind of work with what they already have. So, for example, the first language, we know that not everyone here speaks English first, but police officers have a new system called Language Line, and it provides them on-demand translation or interpreters. So, okay. if on the profile the person says that they have, you know, like a, a vision disability or they're something like they maybe they have ASL they speak in sign language the officer can immediately refer to this language line and get an interpreter on scene with them so then they can provide a better experience and a more tailored experience towards this person so and understand that maybe if they don't listen they don't hear commands or they don't uh, do what they normally expect from from someone because they can't hear or maybe there's some other impairment right that they can be they that, that they don't think it's suspicious they right. understand what's happening yeah and just because like current operating procedure is you know the officer gets to the car and then they see oh this person speaks in sign language so like the person will have the little card up against the window to say like hey I speak in like triples or like if I'm speaking a certain way it's because of this so the officer doesn't know any of this until they get there and some police departments as archaic as it may be communicate with people who speak sign language with a pen and paper they'll hand it over and they exchange like that where if there was an interpreter on the that's scene a, they could a, just that's a very low tech way of doing things for sure right? yeah and you would just think like golly like especially if it's dark you already have the light the flashing lights yep. and everything it could be hard to see each other for sure so also um what blue jay does is 24 hours after your interaction with the police officer you receive the blue jay driver experience or, or questionnaire excuse me and all that is it's eight questions just addressing the car side manner and conduct of the police officer so this section here was extremely, you know, it took a lot of time to derive these questions because we didn't want them to be incriminating whatsoever. At, so yeah, if the way you phrase a question, like uh, oftentimes when you, you get part of a survey and you can kind of tell yep. what the outcome of the survey, what they're hoping it is right. if you guide someone for the question. So your questions have to be phrased exactly. in and a very neutral way, right? That's uh, so exactly what we did was we just pulled the questions from the Oklahoma City Police Department manual. So we're not making our own language or creating our own vernacular about police. It's just literally what's in their training and their handbook. So you'll see questions like, what was the overall tone of your officer? And according to the handbook, it's professional, violent, profane, or harsh. So all the words and, you know, language we're using is all something they're familiar with. So it was almost like a, 
a slam dunk because that was obviously going to be one of the tougher parts of creating Blue Jay was making sure that it doesn't look like it's a chance for people to just bash their officer or incriminate them. It was more so just how do we actually find out if the officer is just doing their job. That's what it is. So we hope that through these questionnaires and through these questionnaires is how the officer's rating is generated. So based on those questions, it generates the score for the rating or for the officer. So we're hoping to prove, like we talked about earlier, is that most police departments are, you know, 95% satisfactory. And there's only like maybe one or two officers who are weighing down the reputation of that department through a video that got released to the news. So that's essentially, in a nutshell, what Blue Jay does. There's quite a few features that are being developed for the next one, but that's what people can expect from the very first launch is being able to communicate with their officer before and or before the officer actually approaches the vehicle. So the app is right now in a in a beta mode, right? Like you're testing it yep. and, and you're doing a, a pilot program with Oklahoma City PD. Correct. Yeah. So we have anywhere from eight to twelve police officers who are you know, just kind of fumbling around with the product to see like what we need to change, what they like, what they don't like. And on the citizen side, so the mobile app, that part is also being developed by the same company. So we're about 70% there. It's very, very close to being finished. So I just mentioned you're doing this pilot with Oklahoma City Police Department, but Mm -hmm. obviously I think anyone listening to this conversation would say this in theory sounds fantastic, yep. but how do we get enough of the public to have the app, and how do we have enough police officers, not just in Oklahoma City, but yep. all over the country, where that that automatic push notification actually functions the way you described it? It's a great question. So here in the city, what we're our, the approach we're taking is the app will be finished before the police actually start to use the system. So that way we have a, like a little pocket of time for people to get signed up because what we don't want to have is releasing the app to the to the people and to the police at the same time. And then police are going around pulling over people, but there's no profile yet. So people are going to have the chance to build their profile first before police even use it. And the, here at Blue Jay Partners, we are already, you know, expanding outside of the state. So we were having the conversations outside of the state to make sure that if anyone does encounter police that they're able to utilize the app so obviously it's going to take some time to get this everywhere but there is a function built into the app where you can go ahead and start to build the ratings without the police having it so what i like to describe blue jay it or blue jay as is it's a tool for police officers but it's not always going to be it's not going to be the new standard operating procedure so if the officer pulls over a driver that doesn't have a profile they would just proceed as normal. So it's just, you know, having an extra tool for the police in every situation. But for citizens, there is a there is a feature for manual entry. So if the if the officer does not use the Blue Jay feature, they can still document that interaction and start to build that database. So when it does get bigger, it'll already populate the information that's been gathered. So the people are going to play a big part in creating this database because once it is released everywhere, everyone's voices will be heard. And I think that's also another huge driving force of Blue Jays, the fact that it's the first time that people's voices will be heard. Because right now, anything, any feedback usually goes through the police department. So, and I'm not a police officer, so I'm not sure what gets done with it. I can only speak and on I what I I think the general know. public doesn't know, right? But yeah. We, we have no idea how they handle that. Right? Exactly. So through my research and talking to police officers over the past year, Formal complaints come in extremely often. I mean, they're very common, and there's just stacks and stacks and stacks, and they're all written, too. So trying to manage the formal complaints along with doing their job and being out in the field, it is tough. I will say it is tough for police officers to formally address those complaints. So I think Blue Jay is a more digestible version, too, for police because most formal complaints and I'm not speaking for any citizens, but a lot of them are not necessarily formal complaints. They're just kind of like telling the police officer what happened, but nothing actually happened. It's more so just, I think this happened, so therefore you need to do something. Where Blue Jay will generate true, you know, I guess you could say natural accountability for police because, you know, the questions that are asked, you can, the insights you can gather from it are incredible. So one of the data insights or the data points that we can see is, over the past six months, Oklahoma City P- Police Department has pulled over 
28,000 individuals. And of those 28,000 individuals, 86% of them said that police officers tone with them was professional. So then you can gather all these things. So now let's say that 18% of the tone was unprofessional, violent, profane, harsh, any of the ones that are would be deemed not good. From there, police officers and chiefs of police can use their budgets to, you know, enroll these officers in maybe like a communication or delivery class. And then you can just, it's way easier to pinpoint the problem they're, with the Blue Jay data. They don't have than to deal is. with everything. They just have yes. to deal with the things that are not working yeah. as well as they like. Yeah. I started rambling, but basically what I was trying to say is through a formal complaint, it's hard for the officer to address where his or her officer went wrong. Right. But with the Blue Jay data, it's very straightforward. It's like, okay, my officer was talking to this person in a way that they didn't like, or my officer illegally searched their vehicle. So that's where Blue Jays comes in handy for the police department. It's a lot easier to digest and figure out where a problem may lie. So you have a, a pilot program yep. with Oklahoma City Police Department. You're in beta. You're uh, proving the concept. Proof of concept is about to happen. Yep. So the next thing you have to do is going to be rollout, and that, mm -hmm. of course, needs some support, right? You guys are fundraising right now. Yep. So we are fundraising right now, and for the app part of it, just the complete development, we're 80% there. We're just nearing the very, very end of it. And, of course, there will be some support needed for the statewide launch, but for the initial launch and just getting the app to the app store, we're about 80% there. So five years later, we're finally there. And, again, like I said, when we started looking forward to it because it's been a long process. So if this sounds like uh, an interesting concept that you would like to get behind, more information from, from Chris or the other folks involved at Blue Jay, uh, their website is bluejllc.net. Correct. And, of course, if you're an OVF member, you have access from your membership on the OVF website because Chris was, uh, was a presenter for one of our power lunches recently. So if you're a member, you already have access to them. If not, you can hit them up through bluejllc.net, not a .com, not a .net. So check that out. It'll be interesting to see how this develops. Like I kind of said in the introduction to the conversation, it's a product that none of us necessarily – want to have the need for but the need is there and so the potential for it to be beneficial and to if, if it can save even one or two lives uh, it's going to be something of, of great success yeah. and the potential to help reform develop policing and better interactions with the public coming out of Oklahoma City I think is a fantastic thing for us yeah. in Oklahoma. It's the it's the new OnStar, I guess you could say, the new updated okay. OnStar. That makes that makes a lot of sense. I yeah. like that. And just speaking with police over the past year, you know, we've made it all the way up from patrol officers to lieutenants to even uh, Chief Gorley, and he was the one that recommended, he was like, I would love to see this on a statewide level. So he's the one, because we had always imagined it going statewide, but we're not going to be the ones using it on his side. So to hear that confirmation was extremely encouraging because now we are taking that approach to trying to get it, you know, released as a statewide initiative because, you know, that would just be, for the state of Oklahoma, it'd be a really cool to see our product released as something intended to help all citizens rather than just a small community here and there. Right. So you had an idea. You created a side hustle to yeah. try to figure it out. Now it's a startup. You're fundraising. Uh, you're, you're getting you're getting your MVP all together. You're you're about there. Yep. I'm really curious to hear because every every podcast episode we end with this question. I'm really interested to hear your perspective on okay. some advice you would give other Oklahoma entrepreneurs about this process, things you've learned, etc. I would say to take action. So for me in today's generation, we're in a very digital age. You know. I'll, People tend to, you know, feel like they're playing a part by, we'll just take, for example, like during the, like a Black Lives Matter movement, you know, you saw that trend of people just posting a black square. Right. So, and that was enough for someone to feel like I did something. But for me, you know, I, I have like an inner, an inner hunger to actually make some change in my life. I get it from my mom. She's worked for the city for 30 years. So it's kind of just been embedded in me to do something bigger. And if you have an idea that you think will help or you think it's something that's necessary, take action because nowadays it's tough to take action because a lot of things can be done digitally. A lot of things can be done remote. So I think if you have an idea, get your feet on the ground and it might be a long process and founder burnout is definitely a thing. But if you can get over that, I definitely think you'll be, you'll feel 
fulfilled in the very end. That is some fantastic advice. Young entrepreneur Chris Foster, president and founder of Blue Jay. The app is going to be out to the public soon. We're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you speaking to OVF recently. We appreciate you being on the podcast today and definitely appreciate that bit of advice. I think that's fantastic for anyone to just think about, right? If you have an idea, it's all out there. The potential's out there. Just just go do it, right? Yep. It's like Nike says, it's only crazy until you do it. (laughs) There you go. Thanks so much, Chris, for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me.